What is going on guys, DBG here. In this video, I'm going to be talking about everything we know so far about NBA 2K19 in my career. Obviously, I'm a my team guy, so my career does not interest me too much, but um, in general, it is a game mode that I play a little bit every year, and I'm definitely going to be playing the prelude anyway for the week before NBA 2K19 comes out. So yeah, expect a lot of prelude my career videos in that week. But um, basically, we got a trailer and we pretty much saw everything that's gonna happen up until I'd say you start playing in the NBA. And it's looking like this year it could be an entire, like it's, well not it could be, it is an entire season until you get to the NBA, which is to some people's liking and to other people it's not great. I wish that they had say two career modes, one where it's like obviously the story driven my career where um, like they pay the voice actors, they've got some really nice voice actors in the trailer, but I'm not going to really focus on that, I'm going to focus on more of the gameplay part, like I don't really care that Haley Joel Osment is um, your social media guy, that Michael Rappaport is in it, I really don't care about that. So I'm just going to talk about kind of the gameplay thing and the story uh, in general and see what way it can kind of, whether I think it's a good or a bad thing. But um, a lot of these points, I was look, just looking through the trailer, I was looking through a lot of just breakdowns. And to be fair, um, there was an article on Forbes.com from Brian Mazik. I will link it in the description. And he basically has done an entire trailer breakdown and broke down bit by bit by bit of this trailer. And initially, I was going to start off... Um, well, initially, I was going to make this video like that, just basically doing a trailer breakdown. But there's enough of them already there, and it's been like eight hours, so it's a little bit too late. So in this video, I'm just going to be talking about kind of my opinion on a lot of the things and whether I think they're going to be good or not. So first of all, something I don't really care too much about, that like obviously your name is AI. They straight away, they call you AI. But um, again, they're going to have a generic name and if they want the whole story based around it, you can't choose your name. So it, it's understandable, but again, I'd rather be able to have your nickname. Like I think everyone, like whatever about being called AI, I think everyone would be happy if your nickname was the greatest nickname from all the old my careers. If you were called the waiter, if you were the waiter, I don't think anyone would care. Or for example, if you had a name, you weren't a nickname, your name was something and you could have another nickname you're called by in-game, but I don't know. Um, it's not that relevant, but it's something. And this is the biggest part of it. And I'm guessing like every single year, the prelude is until you make the NBA. And I highly doubt it's gonna be like that this year. And um, I'm guessing the prelude is going to end up being until the draft. That's kind of what my guess is for the prelude, but again, that comes out on, it comes out in about two weeks from now, so we'll see then. So basically, you start off playing in China. So before the NBA draft, you play in China. So it's actually kind of cool that you went to China. So obviously like an Emmanuel Moutier situation. So I'm guessing that it's something like you're a high school player and you go straight from, um, the uh, high school to China rather than going through college, you go through the non-conventional route. And the fact that you go undrafted means that you mustn't do well in China. Like, no matter what, you mustn't do well in China, which is kind of weird because maybe you only get a couple of seconds here and there to play the game and you just, the game basically glitches the city and miss shots, but it's kind of weird because you think that an awful lot of it would be based on how you do in China. And you think that if someone's playing in China and doing really well and goes to the NBA draft, that they'll be drafted somewhere. So I think it's very rare that we're gonna have, I think it's, sorry, not very rare, I think it's very unlikely that we've got too much of a uh, like thing in China. We've got too much gameplay. I highly doubt we're gonna get too much. Especially with the fact that you go undrafted because, well, if it is realism they're looking for, if you go out and ball out in the Chinese league, you are getting drafted. You are probably getting, like if you get a contract in the Chinese league at a high school, you realistically are a top 15 recruit. And if you ball out there, you are going top 10. Like, Moutier struggled big time in China, and he still went number seven in the NBA draft. And a lot of people thought he was gonna go number four. So, um, yeah, like, I'm guessing you struggle in China, obviously, from the trailer, you don't speak the language of the uh, coach, but um, that's, or that's really it, like. And then you end up in the NBA G League for the Mad Ants. The fact that most people didn't even know that these were a team just kind of sums up how much people care about the G League. So um, obviously you're playing the G League for, by the looks of it, a year. Because the very end of the trailer, you, they do say, do you want to play the last game? It doesn't say what specific team it's for. But um, that's kind of interesting. I'd, like, I'd rather have it so that the story wasn't linear. 
Like, in my opinion, I'd much rather have a non-linear story where if you're struggling, you could get sent down to the G League at any given time, and you get brought back up from the G League, depending on how well you played, um, rather than you just getting thrown straight in the D League, or the G League, sorry. Um, and I'm guessing that even though, like, you can see that you have a rival in this game, you can see that you and the rival are competing for minutes, but, like, obviously, um, it's 2K my career. If you have the difficulty on a lower difficulty, or even a higher difficulty and you go to the game, you're going to outplay your rival. So it's just kind of, like, it wouldn't be great. Like, if you're going out and averaging 40 a game in the NBA G League and suddenly no NBA team are looking for you, like, without even getting a shot in the NBA, that's very, very unlikely. The only people that can average them type of numbers and not really get a shot are ones that were up there and completely flopped, like Jimmer. But, um, yeah, so I don't really know how it's going to be like with the G League. I would have much rather seen you be able to... Um, Guess, tra get brought up and down to G League depending on how you play it. But again, the story seems to be very, very linear. So I think 2K kind of want to go for a more cinematic experience again, which is not great. So um, in this um, article that I'm reading, um, the guy who wrote it, uh, Brian Mazik, he um, basically thought, thinks that this screenshot is for a mini game for about um, establishing player ratings. I just think that it's a new screen for um, a player creating. I think there's going to be like, as you can see, there's a middle ground. So I'm guessing that you will have, say, for example, 15 um, things to do. And you can say, uh, or 15 like points, and you can go minus points. So you're average at everything. And say you can go minus in standing dunk, but then plus in driving dunk, or minus in driving layup, and plus in uh, shot three, or something like that, along those lines. And everything kind of. Um, having an advantage and disadvantage here overall. So I'm guessing that it's gonna be something like that. You can make yourself weaker in certain areas to start off, so you've got a little bit more variation. But again, there is archetypes, so I really don't, well, there probably is archetypes, and we haven't really heard much about that, so we really don't know. And obviously, you've got the entire um, story mode of it. You've got your rival, you've got your mentor as usual, you've got the friend, you've got coach, um, Haley Joel Osmond, your social media manager, um, and the fact that they uh, they talk about NBA 2K League, of course they're gonna push that as much as possible. You've got your girlfriend, but um, like that's the story. Like realistically, people like the majority of players. To be fair, actually, no, the majority of casual players will love the story. And the fact is, is that like the majority of people that are watching this video right now aren't really casual players. You guys are taking the game seriously. So a lot of my audience that I'm talking to right now probably won't, don't really care about the story. Like I don't necessarily care about how the story is. I'd rather it just be a better gameplay experience. But there are an awful lot of people like, in, there's a reason they keep doing it. Like the general public would much rather this kind of linear story with all these like really cool voice actors and stuff. And honestly, I think that's for a little bit of a different market than this video I'm making. So what do I think about the my career? I think it's a really, really good start to start in China because like China is one of the biggest basketball markets in the world. There's over a billion people in that country and basketball is one of the biggest sports. So for the people in China playing the game, suddenly you're playing in China, it's great for them. For them, they'd probably rather you be able to stay in China, to be honest. And um, for me anyway, I think with the fact that they begin the career in China, I don't think it'll be too long until we start to see a NBA 2K my career where you can go to the EuroLeague. Where you can decide, I'm gonna go to EuroLeague out of high school. And that, for someone like me, that would be absolutely insane. I don't know if 2K still have the rights to the EuroLeague teams because I know they definitely did. And it's something that I said to the NBA Live developers and I'm like, if you give an option, like they've got an option of the league or the streets, if they get the EuroLeague teams in EA and give an option of going to EuroLeague and then eventually going to the league or rather than going to college, going to EuroLeague and stuff like that, I can guarantee you that European people are going to, well, European people that are interested in basketball are gonna buy the game. But at the same time, again, that's a very, very small market because like I'd say, um, European people that are interested in basketball are gonna buy the game anyway. So um, yeah, I'm kind of, uh, I'm talking about ideas that I'd really enjoy, but in the grand scheme of things for sales, I don't think it makes too much of a difference. But I think the fact that it begins in China is great because China is such a big market. Um, the fact that you end up in the G League at the start and have to play a year in the G League is a little bit annoying because like you, you probably will go out and average 30 to 40 in the G League and like realistic like if it was more realistic you'd suddenly um be 
called up straight away with any NBA team. And the fact that if you are averaging like 30, 40, you wouldn't even need a rival. Like you'd be so far better than anyone else on your team that it, like it wouldn't even matter too much. Um, and one huge thing, one absolutely huge, huge thing about NBA 2K My Career that we found out is that you can skip cutscenes. Yes, you can skip cutscenes in NBA 2K19. That is such a big thing. Like, the crazy thing is that, like, when I wanted to start playing Park on, I think it was my Xbox, or, i oh, sorry, on my other account on PS4, because I used a New Zealand account for the prelim last year. I tried to do it on my other account on the PS4, and, um, sorry, on my main account, and then all of a sudden, um, I had to create my player, I had to go through all the cutscenes, I had to go through everything to get into the playground, and then just play some park, and I just said, it's just not worth it. Like, it, honestly, I didn't feel it was worth it at the time. But now, like, you can skip all those cutscenes. Like, if you don't want to uh, look at anything from the story, you don't really have to, to be completely honest, which is a really, really good fact, which is a really good feature from the game this year. And you think, like, the fact that skipping cutscenes is such a big deal shows how bad that was last year. But, um, yeah, so, basically, that's pretty much it for NBA 2K19 my career the story again like if you're interested in that um you can go and watch the trailer you'll be able to see pretty much everything there but um gameplay wise I think it could be good I think that it's also um hopefully you can build up a lot of um like VC and you can make your player say a 75 ish overall minimum straight out of the G League. Obviously, if you're a park player, you're going to boost your player straight away. But I mean, like, if you're just a my career player, you can go straight out of the G League and be a solid NBA player. And not just dominating the G League, dominating China, like you used to dominate in college and high school and previous 2K games. And then all of a sudden, like, just randomly be terrible in the NBA. So I don't think that's going to be the case. I think it's going to probably be a little bit better progression. But, um, Hopefully everything that I'm saying is the case. This is kind of an ideal situation based on what we've seen in the trailer. But um, nothing bad to report. Nothing too interesting, but nothing too bad to report from NBA 2K19 my career. And the fact you can skip cutscenes is crazy. So anyway, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.